Hi, I'm Derek Landy, author of the Skullduggery Peasant series, and now the new Doctor Who short story. Why did I choose to be involved in this project? I like that word, choose, almost as if I had a choice in the matter. Uh, I was told about this, I was asked if I'd be interested in contributing, um, and I didn't know what other writers were on board. Um, and I didn't care that, that I was being given an opportunity to write a Doctor Who story. I was being given an opportunity to write for my favourite uh, Doctor, um, the Tenth, and, and I could not turn that down. There was literally no choice involved. Dying in your arms, Pino. You're not dying, I missed you, it's only a bullet, just regenerate. No. One little bullet, come on. I guess you don't know me so well. I refuse. Regenerate. Just regenerate. Please, please, just regenerate, come on. I'll spend the rest of my life imprisoned with you. You've got to, come on. We can't end like this. You and me, all the things we've done. Axons, remember the Axons? And the Daleks. We're the only two left. The story I've written uh, features the Doctor and Martha um, as they go to a planet where f fictional characters are real. Um, I actually was halfway through writing this before I sent the proposal into Puffin and the BBC. And um, they got back to me. They said, this is, you know, we love it. It's a point of an idea. One thing, the second Doctor has already visited a land of fiction. Um, and uh, he's, in, he's interacted with Medusa and Serrano de Bergerac and uh, the three Musketeers. So as long as you don't have any of these characters, you're fine. And, and I said, I don't. And then they said, as long as you don't have, say, Rapunzel, you're fine. I went, ah, nuts. Because <laughs> um, I have Rapunzel. And then I did a bit more research because the... That episode, The Mind Robber, um, it's featured again in comics, in audiobooks, in spin-off novels. And I didn't want to contradict anyone. Um, and I built up a list of fictional characters of, of, of other ones that were used, like Dracula. And I also kind of used Dr Dracula in mine. Um, my whole thing behind it was I could either rewrite whole chunks of it or just embrace the fact that he's already been to a, a land of fiction and make that an actual part of the story, uh, which is what I did. Um, and, and I think uh, it's uh, pretty spectacular. Doctor, it's the professor. He's got this watch, he's got a fog watch. It's the same as yours, same writing on it, same everything. It's a bit ridiculous. I asked him. He said he's had it his whole life. So he's got the same watch. Yeah, but it's not a watch. It's this chameleon thing. No, 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 no. It's this, it's this, this thing, this device. It rewrites biology. Changes a tunnel into a human. And it's the same watch. Can't be. That means he could be a time lord. You might not be the last one. Jack, keep it up. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yes, yeah, of course it is. But which one? Brilliant, fantastic, yeah. But they died, the time lords. All of them, they died. Not if he was human. What did he say, Martha? What did he say? But he looked at the watch like he could hardly see it, like that perception filter thing. What about now? Can you see it now? My childhood memories of Doctor Who is basically the back of the sofa. Uh, I was one of that generation of kids who, who wasn't even content to pick up a cushion and hold it in front of his face while watching this show. I had to get up go behind the sofa, physically go behind the sofa and hide. And that says something about this show. It, it, it says something about the respect that this show has for its audience, that they are willing to trust the audience in order to scare them. Um, and so I am quite proud to be one of this uh, traumatized 
generation of Doctor Who fans uh, who who sought uh, solace behind the back of the sofa, and I'm quite proud of that. Um, I wouldn't go back in time. As a science fiction fan, uh, I don't think you could reasonably expect any of us to go back in time. Because while the whimsical part of your brain would be going, wouldn't it be great to inhabit my body when I was 17 or 18? And I could take care of this situation differently. I could win this argument. I could always come out on top. I could get the girl. I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. And that's fine for the daydreaming part of you. But then the logical science fiction fan part of you is going, no, 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 I, I can't do that. Because if I do that, then this will be affected and that will be affected. And this, the ripple effect will just keep on going. Um, and will, it will eventually lead, as we all know, to robot apocalypse. Um, so I can't go back. I can never go back. I go forward. I go into the future. I go a thousand years into the future. Uh, and I just want to see how we as a species are doing. Are we on this planet? Are we on more than one planet? Are we even alive? Uh, I just want to see, you know, how we are. Um, but never go back. Never, ever go back. Think of people. Robot apocalypse.